Namaste students. We are here for our second session of the same poem in the bazaars of Hyderabad. In our first session, we have talked about the life of the poet, her connection with the poem, the contextualization of often in Hyderabad and present Hyderabad, the geographic condition of India, so before we get into the poem, we have to trace back to our title, especially the words. We have to microscope the words. In the first session, I have talked about that literature can include all. See, when I'm saying that we have to microscope the words, microscope, it's a laboratory word, if I, if I quote unquote. So I'm using that one to microscope it. So it, it has to be an experimentation in the bazaars of Hyderabad. Before I go into that, let me take one point. Sarojini Naidu's one of the themes is bazaar. Whenever she has gone, she is a well-read person. She has traveled different parts of the world. She, Therefore, what happens, she, she has a wide experience about the bazaar and the streets, situations, societies, culture. So she has taken very common aspect and in the process of poetry, in the process of creation, she made it uncommon. That's the greatness and uniqueness of a poet, of any artist rather. Very common, it becomes uncommon after the process. That's art. Sade Gama Ba, you, you have the same tune. But when you are weaving with these tunes and you make a song, that becomes a perfection. A perfect creation of art. That's the signature style of an art. That is what she does. Here also in the bazaars of Hyderabad, it's a very common picture. Very common picture. If you go outside, every day you see that picture. But we cannot compose such a poem like this. That's a greatness. Somehow poets are different from common human beings. Difference in the sense from the perspective of creation. They have the talent, inner strength to transfer things into something novel, something genuine, something unique. And that can transform the character of the readers. This is called ecstasy. These are the different theories I will tell later on if I get any chance. So, whenever we we'll complete the poem, it would be a task, especially the readers I'm talking about, to have a concrete judgment whether she is successful to do it or not. It's not a mathematical calculation that with numerals you will get a calculation, a definite term to, to ultimate or to, to get a calculation that whether she has done it successfully or not. That's not her intention, but as a reader feeling wise or emotion wise, we have to judge it. In the bazaars of Hyderabad, in the bazaar, that, that proposition in, it talks about she is in the market or in the bazaar. So being in the market, she has given a pictorial description. Pictorial again means picture-like, as if with camera she is taken a view. Her poem becomes a camera with which she is taking a panoramic view of the bazaar. Today's technical term, this is called camera term, panoramic view. So she is in the bazaar. Ultimately, you can understand that writing a poem, writing a novel, sometimes it is not a table work. You have to go in the field. It's a field work rather. So field work gets transferred in the table. So a poem is also a meticulous task. That is what the poet is exemplifying here. In the bazaars of Hyderabad. Now I will focus on the word bazaar. It's an English term. Bazaar, if you translate into Bangla, then it's going to be heart or mala. Mala sometimes, because if you go to rural villages, interior parts of the country, so there is no concept like bazaar. One day in a week, that's going to be Sunday. Sometimes it's Saturday. There will be a, there will be a hut 
Bangla hut where people will come with their own products. They will sit especially in the afternoon. They will sell it and they will go back. That's hut. There is a famous poem by Ravindran Tagore. The name of the poem is Heart. If you have not read it, please go through. So heart is very important. Bazaar is very important. And you, when Sarojini Naidu has written this poem in the year 1912, you have to understand that it's not bazaar. It's not today's market. So there, were, there was no specialization what we have today. Today we have different markets made for different items this is for jewelry this is for dress this is for utensils this is for shirts so we have so much specialization but that is was not available during that point of time so it was a designated place where all people will come with their poshura if i if i if i take any help of a bangla word with their poshura and they will sell it they will show it they will display under sunlight, there was no artificial light. There is no artificial construction. They will sit in the open nature and they will show their products. Customers will come and they will try to charm by their products, by their handworks, rather handiwork. So it's handwork and at the same time it's handiwork because it's very handy. And customers will, that's the nature of heart, bazaar. But right now we call it bazaar or market. And this life is all about a bazaar where all people have come to a place. This is the globe. This is the universe. And everywhere, every phase, there is a transaction. Transaction is going on. You are giving something and you are taking something. You are giving money and you are getting the thing or you are getting the particular element that you are trying to buy or purchase. So everywhere there is transaction. Transaction is in relationship also. Today you are very small. Therefore your parents are taking care of the children. But ultimately the table gets turned. There is a shift of relationship and responsibility. When your parents grow old, you become mature. You become an established member of the family. You have to take care of those aged parents. Shift of responsibility. Again transaction. It's a transaction of emotion. It's a transaction of relationship. Marriage, again, it's a, it's a transaction of emotions. That you come, you do these tasks, I'm keeping you this and that to, to microscope these things. So life is all about transaction. So bazaar is a place where you can see the vibrant transaction of life. Vibrant transaction of life. Where it's very much clear, vivid, very much transparent. So from that perspective, with that intonation, we have to try to read the poem. And it's a conversational poem. Conversation in the sense as if the, po the poet, she has gone in the market and she's asking questions to the shopkeepers and different types of shopkeepers. So it's going to be a conversation. They're answering. The poet is asking a question. So much easy and easefully she has written this poem. But ultimately at the last stanza, we get the effect of a poem. We will check it. So in the bazaars of Hyderabad, I have told that, okay, this is one element in Rabindran Tagore. He has talked about heart. In different songs also, we talk about Mela and heart. Mela is a place of, it's rather a united place. There is no hierarchy. What's the meaning of hierarchy? Hierarchy means states. It's poor people, then uh, uh, middle, and then it going to it's going to be rich people. So it's going to be hierarchy, a ladder. So in mala or in heart, in the bazaar, there is no hierarchy. People, respective of caste, creed, religion, age, they come, they see, they observe. They transact, they deal, they bargain, and ultimately they get the things and go back. And again, another transaction begins. Because if you take the vegetables from the market, you go and you just transfer it to the cook or whoever cooks. 
And again, she cooks that vegetable you eat, and that, that, in that, that way the transaction goes on in life. There are so many songs. Duniyar hati eshe kena bechar ki dam diye ki dan pelam. Again, I'm repeating. Duniyar hati eshe kena bechar ki dam diye ki dan pelam. Lalil shobujer mela boshe chhe. Tomar bhuvane phuler melaay ami kandi shaharay. Here in this particular line, here it's a it's a song, famous song. Tomar bhuvane phuler melaay. Phul here talks about your success, your glory, easiness of life. But somebody is crying. There is a phrase, karo poshmash, karo shorbonash. Similarly, this is all about. So, from that perspective, we have to go through. There are five stanzas. There are five stanzas. Each and every stanza, she has talked about some shopkeepers, what they sell, what are they seeing, how are they crying. Here, crying means how are they shouting. Shobji chai, Shobji chai, this is a cry. So these are the typical observations of the poet. Typical observations. How do they cry? Whether they're taking the name of the fruit or they're taking in the name of uh, the fruit's name at the same time the price. So that much detail she is giving. You can understand that how much observant. This is called sheer. She takes huge interest that each and every step she looks and she magnifies and definitely the poem becomes a perfect piece of art. Every time I'm just repeating this because until and unless you become an observant, sheer observer, definitely it's not going to be a perfect piece of art. So in the first stanza, I have shared that this is a conversational tone. It's written in a conversational tone. Quite haphazard. Because she has traveled to different places. So all these details you will get. It's not metrically designed. It's not fully organized. It happens like this. If you go to market right now, if, if you are asking the, 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 the price of one thing, and if it's too much, immediately we're moving to another shop, maybe which is the opposite direction or in another direction. So you are not located to a particular place. You are just moving like a pendulum from one shop to another shop, from one street to another ship. That's the thing. And therefore the poetry, but the poem is also designed in the same fashion. So you have to bear the language. With which language she has given that the flavor of a bazaar. Language is also very important. The moment you are talking to a shopkeeper, maybe that shopkeeper is not so educated. She or that shopkeeper doesn't know anything about esoteric language or the language system. It's going to be very common, commonplace language, day to day language. And definitely she has brought in that language system to keep the flavor of a bazaar. And I have already shared Bazaar is a place, rather a united place where people from all different sectors, they come and they do their task, they take the service, they give their price and they go back. So that's the quality of a Bazaar. It's a very vibrant place. It's a fresh place. In the morning, in the morning when it's really fresh and vegetables, all things are fresh. It can circulate an air of freshness. And the hue and cry in the bazaar, the hue and cry, the conversation, people's activity, these are really charming. That keeps, that rather triggers inspiration, triggers energy, triggers fresh air inside. So this is the positive aspect of bazaar. We are looking bazaar from that perspective. 
and whatever intonations, whatever points I have already shared with you with these intonations, we have to keep those points in our mind so that we can refer to those point, points or uh, illustrations while we read the poem. This is not the summary. The first, she has talked about different merchants. Next, she has come to the vendors. Next, she has gone to the goldsmith. You can understand when you talk about merchants and when you talk about vendor, there is a difference. A merchant is a bit stabilized. A vendor is not so stabilized, still flickering, not so much established, not so much settled. Next, he goes to the goldsmith jewelry shop. You can understand again, there is a shift. It's a constructed shop dealing with some expensive materials. So she's moving. Next, she goes to the fruit shop. Fruits are very fresh, very fresh. If fruits are not fresh, nobody is going to buy. If vegetable is bit, bit unfresh, you can, you can. But fruit, if it is unfresh, nobody is interested in that. Not only that, he goes to the cultural aspect of the bazaar, those instruments, the shops of instruments, where somebody is playing sitar, sarangi, these are not original instruments. When I will teach the poem, when I will deal the poem, I will deal those things categorically. And next, she twisted the poem entirely with the help of women and what they are doing with the flowers, the petals. So you can, you can understand that it's a myriad forms of the bazaar, myriad. It's a myriad forms, variegated forms of the bazaar. Not only she's stuck at one place, rather she has given the panoramic view of the, uh, the bazaar and she has visited to different shops. She has talked to the shopkeeper and whatever she has felt about the bazaar, she has written down with this poem. So if you read the poem, it's going to be the quintessential idea about the bazaar of Hyderabad and the vibration of a bazaar. So what bazaar insights in human beings? What's the quality of a bazaar? So with this intonation, I will end this session. In our next session, we will aim to read out the stanzas with explanations. I hope that you have jotted down all the poor points and with that relation you read the poem so that in our next session what whenever I will take those stanzas it becomes an easy step to catch my words to catch my language to catch my explanations I understand that the first two introductions are going to be a bit lengthy for you but this is the perspective or this is the experience of an experienced person that makes a simple piece uncommon and unique. With that expectation, today I will finish my class. Thank you very much. We'll see you in our next session when I will deal with the stanzas. Thank you very much.